Good to see you, my brother. And boss Jerry Crowley, what are you doing here? I'm going to steal one minute of Lindell's time. He has enough time, you know, between yeah, TV, yeah, radio, yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. he's got enough media time. I get in a cab last night, and the cabbie's listening. He says, uh, what do you do? I said, I run a couple radio stations. I said, one is AM 970, The Answer. Our morning man, Joe Piscopo. He goes, Joe Piscopo. He goes, is he still lifting? He was cut. What do his arms look like? Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and I told him the story of how you were lifting yeah. in your suit one night. We were both in the gym. I had my shorts. My you Wall had Street your workout. <laughs> I, I walk into, and he's in his suit lifting. <laughs> anyway, this cab driver is Sean the cabbie. He's our new best friend. Oh, that's he's good. What's his name? What's his name? Sean. Sean. Hi, you, Sean. Uh, and he Piscopo was shout out. And he was thrilled to know you're alive and well. Yeah, 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 right. And uh, working out in my suit, for crying yeah. out loud. So you got Mike yeah, Lindell. Good. Yeah, how am, I, am I holding it up all right? I said, it's so worth these hours, though. That's a tough Mike. Story to follow, Mike. Jerry, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Mike, uh, first of all, how are you, my friend? Good I'm to, doing great. God bless you. You're doing no, just, so much. I'm in shape. I just ran about a mile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I said, well, you're sitting in here. I'm like embarrassed. We don't send a car. Well, I didn't know he had two Broadways. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. West and then Broadway, boy. Because it just to confuse us, to I confuse us. I said, "This is not my car." Or, I mean, this. Is <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually run? I know you yeah, ran. Oh yeah, yeah, I ran about, about six. Blocks you know, I got to tell you, I want to tell you, and uh, Mike Gallagher is going to join us. Your buddy Mike, and if you could stay with us for a while, we'd love for you to stay with us a while. Because I love what you did when you were down at the White House and you were the president was there and all that you're fighting against this horrific opioid yeah, problem. Yes, yeah. And you being a crack addict, brother. And we've right. talked about yeah. it. And I'll tell you, it's magnificent what you're doing. Yeah, and then I watch. I'm watching on my phone. And the president goes, Mike Lindell. Yeah. And then you're putting that. How, how did you get started with that? And what are you doing in that regard? I got a lot to talk to you about yeah, that. Yeah. But can we start well, that, there? Yeah, yeah that's uh, it's an 800 page opiate bill that president, the president put in put it into place. And and uh, I actually hired uh, um, uh, Doug Wardlow. He ran against Keith Ellison in Minnesota. So as for attorney general, I hired him now for my, That's great. For my attorney That's so he great. can figure out that yeah, whole bill. <laughs> Ellison got it. That was so Yeah, weird. I don't know, Joe. <laughs> That's another story. Oh, uh, my gosh. But we've... Uh, but I'm, start, I'm launching the Lindell Recovery Network, so you're going to have all these stories of hope come down, like you've put in your age, a yeah. 22-year-old opiate addict, and yeah. all these stories just like you will come down. Yeah. I'll show you where to go get help, and then I'm going to have paid mentors when you come out of there all over the country, and uh, we're going to beat this. Because, it, it, yeah, and walk me through it, Mike, too, because I, I don't understand. The opioid is what? That's the pills we should worry about? I used to worry, I mean, in my day, you know, when we were kids, right. they were either, they were smoking the crack, right. or they were just, uh, they would shoot heroin, for crying out loud, yeah, or they would yeah. sometimes snort it, but right. they're getting hooked on pills now, well, yes? Pills and then heroin, and, and uh, you know, the thing is, it's, uh, you know, I often wondered, uh, back in our day, Joe, I thought, what if somebody... Poison had poison cocaine out there. Would a person still do it? I yeah. always thought that to myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now you're finding out today with the, you know with this adulterated opiate thing, people still do it and they they risk it every day, and it uh, you know it's it goes back to uh, um, addictions just masking pain, and I think people. Uh, you know, it, it, you can't even scare people straight is what I'm saying. It's I know. Like, and you had the most amazing story is that when you were doing crack and you were just w pushed it s so far. That 14 the, days. That the, uh, is that right? That 14 14 days. 14 days you yeah. were up, yeah. like 14 days? Yeah. Is that? And then the dealers, actually, the, de the dealers in Minneapolis came over and said, yo, man, this is too right, much. Right. They did an intervention on I mean, me, and there was, uh, I actually, uh, the, the one of them came up. I went down the streets of Minneapolis. I couldn't buy crack anywhere. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. I came back up, and that one dealer says, he was waiting for me. He says, you know, he says, give, give me that phone. I'm going to take a picture of you. He said, you've been promising us, for, promising us for years now that this pillow is just a platform for God, and you're going to come back and help us all someday when you quit. He goes, we're not going to let you die on us. So it was very prophetic. I would tell those guys that all the time that I'd come back someday and when I quit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. quit that day. but I. You uh, didn't quit that day? No, another year. Oh my gosh! Yeah, After yeah. the intervention, yeah, yeah. you still with the drug dealers. You're looking at the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the and it was the toughest of tough in yeah, the inner city. Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, absolutely. And they, but they were the first ones that knew I quit. I looked them in the eye that day. I quit January 16, 2009, and, 
and they knew it was over. And they've uh, one of them works for me now. He's a born again Christian, and uh, and uh, we're going back and helping everybody. And it's going to be an amazing platform. That's a magnificent, together. magnificent story. Yeah. But so and and, and see, they get hooked on the, the opioids like that. Somebody's hooked. They see the kids on it. It's you know it's a personality thing too. I think because I know I'm I'm, I'm obsessive compulsive, and I can remember I used to drink back in the day. We were right, right. not on the show Saturday Night Live or right. never when right. I'm working, but afterwards we get hammered, you know, right, just yeah. like that. And it, then I turned it away, and I, I I do a lot of that toward working out because that's also an obsessive compulsive right, kind of right, thing, right. you know. So how do you tell? And where is there a place now where somebody could go who's listening as a child uh, that's the in a situation? Help out there, and they've been doing it since like 1886 is the Salvation Army treatments. Really, they are so really. Amazing. They're right there with Teen Challenge, Union Gospel. They're they're in every every single state, every single big city, yeah, I yeah. believe. And they it, it, they are amazing. I send everyone there. They uh, it's uh, faith based, but it and it's uh, uh, do, there's it's donor based, so it's free. Yeah, uh, yeah you're gonna yeah. you're gonna have a place. And yeah, plus here they hire from within. It's almost like being there as an apprentice. You're you're learning its new skills and and. Uh, and they really address what everybody, the reason people get addicted is fear. A lot of it's fear of rejection and unworthiness. You know, hmm. you know, Joe, I couldn't talk to you. You told me that I was a natural. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. You were like, you were like, you I, I was so shy with Tron. Oh, you know, oh, are you kidding day. me? Oh, I'm serious. Absolutely. Mike always says that Joe, you told me you're a natural. Are you, are you on the air? <laughs> you? Are you kidding me? But yeah, but I think, you know, all these things, these drugs that mask, uh, you know, false uh, false courage and mass pain, and mm -mm. and I to fit in. You know, I think you know kids to fit in, and and uh, you get get into the teens and early twenties, and I think yeah, there's yeah, a lot of that yeah. going on. You know, Mike Lindell with this going in the morning. This man is a legend. We have lots to talk about. Can you hang for a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I know absolutely. you're pulled every which way. Sure. I just want to read an ad, and then we're going to bring Mike Gallagher in eight fifty one with Piscopo in the morning. Let me tell you about Harry's dot com. Harry's dot com. This is the best shave, and uh, Mike understands because he knows. I'm so happy that I could tell good pro tell people about the good products. The My Pillow, the mattress topper, forget about it. And now the deal that you give us on My Pillow, Harry's does the same thing. Harry's.com. Do you, are you hip to Harry's, Mike Lindell? Get... I'm, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get you, man. I tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I do. It's a great shave. Debbie loves it. I love it. The the blades are great. Now you can get you can get a Harry's holiday gift. Uh, package. This is great. It comes in this spectacular box. It starts at just a ten dollars. Ten dollars. It's a hundred percent quality guarantee. It's got a great handle. You can option. You have an option to engrave the handle. German engineer blades, foaming shave gel, travel cover to protect the blades. A handsome holiday box. And you know what? If you could redeem a Harry's trial offer to experience the quality of shave before committing, Harry's.com. I live with it. I, as a matter of fact, I shaved yesterday. Excuse me. If you could hear. On the mic, you don't hear a beard. You know why? Because I shaved with Harry's. You got to go to harrys.com. And this, for you, exclusively listening to the Piscopo Show. You get free shipping. It ends on December 12th, which is tomorrow. You got to act now. Go to harrys.com, please. Enter the code Piscopo to get $5 off any shave set while supplies last. harrys.com, code Piscopo. Hey, Mike, Lind Mike Lindell and Mike Gallagher. Listen, Mike I want to tell the story about walking into the My Pillow's head My Pillow headquarters in Minnesota and seeing the picture of Joe Piscopo on the wall with Mike Lindell at a baseball stadium. It was the coolest thing. I like. I'm back home in New York. I went all the way to Minnesota to see my buddy Mike, and there's Joe and on the wall. And you sell more My Pillows than anybody, but well, my picture was up. I yeah, that's it. true. That's how, there is that. Am I alive? But, but today, no, AM nine seventy. Nine seventy. Okay. Mike. At 10 o'clock, we go to a promo code Mike G. He won't let me forget. He gets, <laughs> That's the guy. I know, no great. kidding. <laughs> Mike, where, where's the picture up? I'm very pleased. With the My Pillow. It's right in the lobby. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, oh. I, got it right there, I am you. so proud. Right I, I, this is what I love about this guy. You kept telling me I was a natural. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. That's right. That's but right. when I went in, they love you. We go to Minnesota. He goes, Joe, I want to take you to. There was a call center, and people were answering the calls, personally answering all the folks I call. Uh, the, and then we go to the MyPillow factory. You got the workers from Minneapolis there, from Minnesota, yeah, yeah. from your home state, and you're not moving. And every every piece of uh, pro that, that you, what you put in, yeah, all the product really, yeah. material yeah. in the fill is made, made in the USA. United States of America. Yeah, well, and and what, you, you got, 1,600 people? Mike Gallagher, you know what, 1600 too? No, 1,600, no. which is unbelievable. And how many times did you get an offer to make this in China? I'm just oh, curious. Every, everyone. And they tried to copy me over there, they tried, and, but they tried to get me to go over there and make it, and I wouldn't do it. You know, it's not all it's cracked up to be either, but you know, you people that order products from overseas, you got a, a four month window. What if your footprint changes? 
Now, what if you're waiting and you don't get your product? Right. You know, and they, uh, it can become quite expensive, more, more expensive. But what a joy it is to look out my door and see people I grew up with and everybody having careers, not yeah. jobs. Yeah, yeah. And, and careers, without, and, and without a lot a of president and, is yeah. formed careers. That's, that's what it's about. Yeah. And, he, and he had, he knew about Donald Trump from day one. Mm -hmm. He had a dream. He had, he literally had. It yeah. was, it was a divine intervention thing where he dreamt about meeting the president in a room, and he wound up. Now, now they're, you, now they're buddies. Excuse me, Mike. We, we. Well, you'll see him next. Oh, oh you go to Mar Yeah, great. Oh, I've never been. To, have you been to Mar-a-Lago? No. No. And I, I didn't go to the holiday Christmas party either down I there. Know, did you, go? Oh, did no, you no, go? No, no, no. I haven't. Two years it now. I've been invited. Here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll bet we could get in with Mike. I'll bet Mike could get us in the door. I look at the I'll picture. I look right online. I'm There's... inviting you both. Well, thank you, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Trump, Mr. President. You know my my buddies. They all yeah. uh, President Trump loves Mike Gallagher. Well, he loves Joe Piscopo. No, he won't. Piscopo is open for him. New York, New York. I mean, no, no, no. We don't. We've all been on a similar journey, but I, what I want to know has Saturday Night Live made fun of you yet, Mike? Yes, they have. I did, did, did somebody yeah. do you on yeah. SNL? Not, not beef. They did. They've done the pillow a few times. Yeah, I saw they, them they, on they with they Michael Che. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they made fun of uh, of Laura Ingram once when uh, and said what, what what product she had left and it was yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. My yeah. But you, <laughs> well, you but there's stood truth. Strong. You stood by them. That you stood by great. Fox stood, News yeah, when 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 Laura was being targeted. They say on my Twitter now if 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 they say tell me to boycott something, they go don't boycott my pillow. Mike Lindell just double. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Digs his heels in. But he did. He, he did a. Re oh, you know, I read the Hollywood Reporter story. Yeah, yeah. I cannot believe you were in the Hollywood Reporter. Yeah, did you yeah. see that? No, and not only that, the CBS CBS Sunday Morning they did a big profile, and I held my breath. I thought, oh gosh, what, what are they going to do? And it was it was such a it was positive. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to know Mike's story, Joe, and yeah. not walk away being impressed. That's right. Here's a guy putting people to work. In many cases, these are people like him who have kind of been at, at, at rock bottom, mm -hmm. and he's given them. Another chance mm -hmm. in life, and now these they're they're blossoming. And how many eighty thousand a day is it? How many yeah, pillows yeah, we've a day? Sold forty four million now. No, forty four million God. pillows. Yeah, forty one of them sold through the Mike Gallagher show. <laughs> <laughs> Having a you good month. Go, I, you know promo code Hollywood AM 970. Report, 970. Mike Reporter, G, Mike that was G. about that movie I'm in, Unplanned. Unplanned. We want to talk yeah, about yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that was, that's very controversial. You got a second to hang around maybe yeah, yeah. afterwards? Mike, Mike is on. You guys. Mike, 1005, Mike 10 Gallagher. 5. Mike, what's on the show today, boy? Uh, Everything. Pro, my pillow promo code Mike G, 1005. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> come here, come on. Well, give me, just, leave me something. Leave me something, Mike. Come uh, uh, on. Jerry Crowley's on line four. I got to go talk to him now. He's, he's upset. <laughs> Cheryl Atkinson on the show, 1030. Cool. She's wonderful. Cool. Uh, and, the great, and the great Mike Lindell's going to stop by and visit us. I too. love it. I right, love guys. it. Mike, great Thanks. to see you Christmas always. Christmas. We love you, Mike. We, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Lindell and Mike Gallagher at one uh, time on one show. Very, and uh, yeah, and Mike's on at 10.05. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to go to a break, Mike Lindell. Stay with us if you can. Yeah, yeah, I, sure. You know, I feel I, I'm, we're like good friends now, man. I appreciate it. We started on the radio. Radio. And I really, really respect and love you for the for all that you've done and all that you do. Now, this film, this unplanned film, for right. you to go to the Hollywood Reporter, and then they said you support the president. You went, you're right. I, that's right. I did. Yeah. Greatest president of all time in Hollywood. I, I said, and then I said, everybody loves our president. Some just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was so courageous. And you know what? It was a great piece yeah, yeah. because you're just being honest. Yeah, I just, be, I just put it out there and. If they attack me, don't last long. I think people go, oh, you know, why even bother? He's going to keep doing it. Yeah, He's going to yeah, keep saying yeah. good things about our president. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How, how, how was the Christmas party anyway? It was fun? Yeah, yeah, fun was at the fun. White House? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, so you going to invite me next time? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mr. President, my friend Joe, he says I'm a natural. Piscopo in the morning. Mike Lindell coming up. David Burke and Oz Perlman coming right back at you. Can we play this song? Is that all right? Marshmallow World. Now, is Fluff going to get upset now? I'm not sure. I'm afraid to do anything. Mike, it's so politically correct. That's what I love about you, Mike Lindell. You believe in it. Your faith is strong in it. And you do it. And when you, and again, I said this before, Mike Lindell, the great, the one, the only, they always say, Mr. My Pillow. Is that funny? That? Mr. My Pillow. But you're, you're so much more than that, as great as the My Pillow is. And I thank you for always being such a great sponsor. You were here from day one, man. Mm -hmm. And Darren came in and said, I want you to meet Mike Lindell. And then we hit it off. And we've been in Minnesota hanging. That was a great. That was a great time. Nineteen but. below that time, Joe. Oh, it was. I told it all truck. the time. It was truck. <laughs> Poor Joe. He looks up. Is this, is this shirt something wrong with your truck here? I go, no, it's nineteen. And below. I did my other my mic. Michael, let's go out to dinner. I go, we're gonna go to dinner. So we went to like uh, Numero Uno Pizza or something like that. It was like I didn't even know what it was. I said I thought you were gonna think it was a fancy schmancy <laughs> restaurant. Said, Joe, I don't eat with two forks. I'm sorry. No. <laughs>
<laughs> you were great. I said, this guy's so down to earth. And then you took me around the middle of my pillow. You talked about charity. And then you and I, on the plane ride out, talked about the inner cities and your close relationship right. with Ben Carson yes, yes. and my mission that I rail about on the radio. And you're watching now on YouTube and Facebook and kind enough to listen always. Part of this family uh, with uh, Frank and Alan, Debbie, as they, they listen, they hear me rail about the inner cities, all right. the things they're going after the president for. Mm-hmm. Can we just, like, I hope Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer today, they're with the president, can we just help out the way you did? You stepped in. Right. And what's happening in the south side of Chicago and Oakland and East St. Louis and Patterson, New Jersey, and you keep it right there and you take in all these people and actually do something about it. Tell me about right. the president's inner city initiative, well, Mike. Well, we're going to be doing so much, um, you know, you got to start like, a, you know, I, I spent a lot of time there, Joe, with my <laughs> drug addiction. And, uh, so and, true. Uh, Getting uh, with the with the amazing jobs that he's creating right now, it's that's a st- you know that's a start. But we're doing uh, I'm doing so much with my foundation where we're helping uh, helping um, uh, individuals with private sector money to get started. And there's like there's different organizations like uh, 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 the Salvation Army. It's called Pathway to Hope. Mm-hmm. It's the best program. Um, uh, it's like a social service program, but you're not just giving money. You're te- you know teaching yeah. people yeah. Um, different things that they need to know to to get to like just because you have the job. There's a lot of other things that might get in the way, and um, and then the Ben Carson's and Vision Center is just amazing. I tell mean, tell so, us about that. There's now. so many things. It's like a hub, and it gets you. It it actually there's so many parts, but one of the parts is it it takes um, your skills. Um, what your skill that or where your passions lie, maybe mm. where your passions lie, and mm-hmm. uh, and not just uh, um, put you in a box and say here, you know, in, yeah. in the inner cities, like Ben was telling me, you know, you might only get one opportunity and you might miss it, you know, you might miss it. Where where here it can, you know, it shows you, you know, here's all these different opportunities and here's what's, you know, what what motivates people is passion. You know, if you're passionate about mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. And I always said you can have the best job if it's not a job if you're passionate about it. If you, you know, yep, yep, yep. And uh, and it really um, getting um, um, I I'm doing a lot of stuff in Detroit right now, and I have a, a gal there. It's a couple. It's just John and, and Alicia, and they uh, they're right in the heart of the inner city, and they were like the hope there. I think it's showing the hope, and they yeah. I put a new roof on their place now, and we've uh, and they're um, they're out there. Um, every day they'd give the shirt off their back, but it's like a, it's like a, a, a little hub of each, you know, we're going to have in each city and, and, uh, um, not just get, like I say, not just, um, been putting band-aids out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Cause it really, will, it will take Mike. And I know from working in the inner city communities for 25 years, it's been my mission of at risk children. Right. It's going to take, and when you see with all the programs, they just f- f- pour in. And what they take with the inner city too, I know you know this, they they don't solve what the problem is. What you're talking about is solving where yeah, the problem right, emanates right, from. I right, talk about this right. every morning on the radio, Mike. Right. They go out and the, well, we'll do different schools. And then, oh, well, we'll, we'll move everybody out to this, this uh, living arrangement where we'll pay for it. Right. No, create what's happening in the city. Right. Re, it's gonna take 10, 20 yeah, years, right? Any, well, I wanna do it faster. I, whoa, I mean, whoa, I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you care. You don't strike me as an impatient guy. <laughs> if I don't have patience for that, let's get this done now. I want to help now, and and uh, and it's uh, I see you see what's working in different community mm-hmm. communities. Like I'm not kidding. Like Detroit, there's so many good things that are going on in Detroit and have been for years. And I and even in my you know my home state Minneapolis and, yeah, and, yeah. and in Minnesota, but but you see these things that are working, and then you use them in other places. It's kind of like uh, you yeah, know, yeah. It's kind of like an entrepreneur when you when you look at a product, yeah. you reverse engineer it and yeah. say, okay, how do I solve this piece, this piece, this piece? And then you have you don't reinvent the wheel. You look at good organizations that are doing things like Salvation Army that aren't people just think that they're uh, out there just for clothes and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and here they're for addiction. They're for uh, this pathway to hook all these different programs but it's not just them it's um um uh you're you're taking i get and i guess that's another thing that vens and vision centers do it it kind of it's like a hub of a wheel mm. where a, um it reaches out to all these different spokes in the community yep yep, yep got and it. it engages everybody great, great. we all have the same goal yeah but to, but to get everybody connected. Any of it faith and I, based? Yeah. Faith based because you know the faith the, the, the pastors within the inner I, cities. I mean the pastors absolutely are you so engage powerful. All the churches yeah. Yeah. and there it's a huge thing. I spoke at uh, um, in, uh, in actually in Washington D.C. with uh, a star Parker. Um, I don't know if you know her, but she's uh, she does so much with the inner cities yep, and yep, stuff, yep. and she. Uh, um, 
and uh, we, but we but using the engaging the pastors they from all these from what, all these what, cities. What, they what about churches. this, Mike? You know this better than anybody else. Now maybe you can help. And I'd like to offer my help in any initiative you have because I talked to some union guys. I've said this before in the air, so forgive me if you're listening. I repeat myself, but sometimes you got to say it over and over again, Mike. Right to get the message across. Manufacturing, man, just bring the my pillow in Minneapolis or Minnesota is the one thing. Can they bring some manufacturing if they went to South Side of Chicago? Again, it's going to take. 10 in 20 years to turn around create jobs yeah, yeah, it, it's and i keep saying joe it's not going to be 10 20 years we're going to do this man, i love it i love you man <laughs> yeah. i love you here's uh it's the you know what's going on right now and i'll bring this back to our president he brings such confidence to to uh like where i'm at it's not just my pillow it's all these companies now yeah hiring from the inner city, hiring people, giving people second chances too, you know, and, and second chance them. And they're creating careers, not just jobs. Our wages are going up because the consumer confidence is at an all-time high. I yeah. believe that. And I believe entrepreneur and business owners are at an all-time high in spite of all the attacks on our president, yeah. which is shameful. Yeah. It's absolutely shameful. I'm going to put that in there. Yeah. Did I say shameful? Yeah. It is shameful. <laughs> All the great <laughs> things that are going to be done in this country yep. for the people that have needed yeah. it forever. Yeah. And not, you know, inner city, middle America, every every middle class, everybody's, it is, everybody is, you know, I, I say to people all the time, what's going on that you're so upset about? You know, well, you know, he said this, this, I go, you know, what do you care about? You know what's going on? You know there he's fighting for uh, he's fighting for us, mm -hmm. and and uh, all these good things that are going on. They can't say one bad thing, Joe. That's going on. It's they incredible. never they're never you specific. Know? You're they're, absolutely yeah, they're right. They're not specific. They'll say, well, he said that one thing one time. Yeah, yeah. I go, really? <laughs> uh, what two years ago? Who cares? You ever said anything uh, that you might you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, going, yeah. You know, I you know, and if I say something, you know, what really gets me. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna give it the little little political now, but I go down this. Okay. I'm in I'm in Minnesota. I'm at the Minnesota State Fair, and there's about a thousand people come up to me. You want pictures and so on, and every one of them, Joe says, except for one. No, every one of them they say two things. Wow, your transformation! What an amazing story that God brought you through, and 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 we're praying for our president. You know, we're, we're so glad you're back in the president. This is in Minnesota now. One guy comes up to me and he goes, you know what? I really like what you're doing, but you're aligning yourself with the worst guy, blah, blah, blah. And I go, I go, you know, I met him. I know him. He's a friend. You know, I, I, you're telling me now that I'm an idiot. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. You can't take that from me. And anyway, I started arguing with him. He looks right. He goes, "I gotta go." <laughs> well, you know, he didn't want. He they have no that, argument. That's a, yeah. That's the same thing. It's the same old thing, Joe. That's that voice. Yeah, yeah. Those people yeah. are trying to ruin yeah. these good things that are going on in our country. And it's. I'll say it again. Shameful. Yeah, you're absolutely right. As yeah. an internationally renowned businessman, right. and I, because I talk to people locally in New York. You see the construction in New York. Yeah. You see the how New York has blossomed. Yeah. It's since the president's been in office, yeah. Governor Cuomo. I won't tell you that. Mayor de Blasio right, ain't going right, to tell you that. Right. But they, you know, people, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike Lindell, because you know, right. is that they feel they can w release their money now. Absolutely. It's the confidence, and they, it's it's such a confidence. I have entrepreneurs that, you know, they call me all the time. I'm going to be launching a new platform next year or two. I got to tell you about that. But they, uh, these, all these entrepreneurs with new inventions, people are finally willing to take some chances because you feel safe. You yeah, feel safe yeah, with yeah, the economy. Yeah, you feel yeah, safe yeah, with yeah. The, the consumer confidence. Yeah. They got to go hand in hand. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And um, you know, it's not just everybody buying from Amazon. You know, it's a uh, you know buying from our boxers, buying from my entrepreneurs and stuff. And uh, and uh, did I badmouth Amazon? Okay. No, no, <laughs> no, no, sir. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, listen, listen, you make your product here. They're selling stuff from China. <laughs> well, they're copying. That, they put stuff up there and copy a product right next to it. I know, I know, I just know. Don't, I mean, it's horrible. No, but can we can talk on. about that now? Because if, if, if Bezos came to Newark, I would never say the bad thing. I held, I held my tongue. I bit my tongue for a year while we waited, and Newark was in the running. Now that he dissed Newark completely, he's in Long Island City, which I think is great. They take products on Amazon, yeah. like the my pillow. They'll duplicate it in yeah. China. Yeah. They'll Absolutely. counterfeit it, and then Amazon and sells they, it. They sell ads, and the ads are above you, yeah. and it's just horrific. Oh, they oh. do it. The same. Google does the same thing. They're just as bad. Uh, Zuckerberg, I mean Zuckerberg from Facebook. <laughs> um, they, uh, I mean these guys. These guys from Silicon Valley selling ads where entrepreneurs in this country trying to get your product. You work hard to be number one organically, and then they sell seven ads above you, and their products that are either 
uh, counterfeit or made overseas or all these things. It's, it's shameful. That's shameful, too. Wow. And that needs to wow. be stopped. That's one thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's in our country for if you're an entrepreneur, you need a place to put your product yeah. and stuff. And it's coming, Joe. Mike, I'm telling you, we with you in charge, we feel so much more confident. I'm telling you. And I, I want to tell me about the Unplanned, about the movie that you did, that, that you uh, played yeah, a part in the movie. Right. They, came, they called me up. Uh, I was going on my way to Israel. And, uh, and they called me up. They said, we've been praying. We want want you in this movie it's uh it's about uh, abby johnson it's a true story about planned parenthood where she worked there she couldn't take what she's seen and and uh, uh brought down this one one of the planned parenthoods but anyway they asked me to be in i said well we prayed about it, and you're gonna be in it i said well i haven't yet and i'm and i was on the plane with kendra and i and uh and we did we prayed about it, and i said, heard loud and clear i said you're gonna to go in this they wanted me to be a part in it and I liked it so much. I said I put in a million dollars to this cause. It's got an amazing, amazing uh, story, and it's a true story. And uh, and I have a big part in it. Um, I actually run the bulldozer in this <laughs> film. And they, uh, and they, we got down to the set. It was a hidden set and uh, or hidden place because it was so controversial. And I get down there, and there's 300 extras, and we've got the sun's going down. And here, I, I'm going to drive this bulldozer, and they bring in an extra. I go, a stunt man. I go. I'm, I'm not going to go on a, a radio and TV after this and tell me you used a stunt man. I said, I said I, I'll walk. That's great. <laughs> so, That's I, great. so anyway, after the three producers you, you, talked you, to you, each you, other, I had to do it. You I did it. it. Yeah. I get in there and I pull the lever and all of a sudden, you know, they backed up all the 300 extras <laughs> and stuff. And rum, 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 rum. I didn't take the emergency break off right away. So everyone's going, what's going on? They're going, and before they're going to go, cut, get bring in the stunt man. I go, I go, I was just testing it <laughs> without a hitch because we only had one take. One, because the we sun went, was going we down. Went, we we yeah, yeah, never yeah, been yeah, able to yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah classic but i uh yeah they announced <laughs> that and uh and uh it was surprising that was right after thanksgiving they announced that to the country and it went out all the media and and mm. and i haven't heard any bad things you know like um have any attacks maybe they're tired of attacking now you know mike it's because you you speak so organically you're so from the heart and you one-on-one -on -one with president trump and i know him peripherally not like you know him and i and as soon as he got elected uh, frankie and i were saying this is great this is going to be good and that would what do we have to worry about? This guy knows what he's doing. Put yeah. the, the bluster that you see out there, the one-on-one -on -one with Mike Lindell and Donald J. Trump. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and, and it really it is. And, um, you know, he, um, he, he listens so good, too. He takes it all in. I he, watched him. Yeah. He takes in all the information, and he's so pragmatic and so common sense. We have a president that has common sense. Yeah. It's just he yeah. makes yeah. his decisions, yeah. his common sense decisions. i got to tell you a real funny story quick, Joe. Do I have a minute? Yeah, sure. Okay, so here I am. He did a shout-out for me in North Dakota at a rally. I saw it. I One saw it live television. Now I, now, I went to him, and I said uh, I had a dinner with him. There was probably eight, ten of us, and uh, this is about a, oh, a couple months after that rally. And I said... I got him on one-on-one -on, -one on the side, and I said, Mr. President, I said, uh, I said, I want to thank you for that shout-out. But I said, I said, I've got to tell you a funny story. I said, a big paper that you don't like, I'm not going to name it here. We can name one of three, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They called me up, and they go, they said, uh, yeah, Mike, this is so-and-so from, uh, you know, this paper. And he said, wow, the president did a big shout-out for you. You must have... Uh, you must have sold a lot of pillows. And I said, this wasn't about selling pillows. I said, he said he liked the pillow and he used it, but he said, this was about me as a businessman yeah, being a yeah. good ad buyer yeah. and stuff. And I said, it raised my popularity threefold and I was go out to, I was able to go out and evangelize for Jesus. I talked to 50,000 millennials at U.S. Bank Stadium. The president looked at me and said, well, what did he say then? I said, he hung up on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to hear that. He didn't want to hear that. Well, it was good. Mike Lindell, like we love you, man. We appreciate Thanks, all that Joe. you've done and I, I cherish our friendship. And God, God bless you and God Godspeed, Mike. I'll see you soon. Give my love at home. Episcopal the morning. Let's go to Debbie.